Oh, come on. Where it is? Ah, there we go. It's awesome people I'd like to be! Woo! We have it, it's here! It's happening! Matt Rozak is with us today, man. Matt, how you doing? Oh, uh, hey, uh, pretty good. <laughs> I should, you should let close your uh, Twitch right now. You should close the, the, uh, the, the Oh, the, yeah. The, the, otherwise, guess. there'll be like a massive feedback loop. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've muted it, but uh, I'll turn it off. <laughs> Is there anywhere I can read the Twitch comments while I'm doing this? Uh, but... Yeah, actually, if you just pause the video on Twitch, like you can see I have, uh, still have the website up. Oh, so just pause the video point. and then you'll, be at, you'll have access to the chat. Yeah. Sweet. Get that back on. <laughs> I love your poster in the background, by the way. Yeah, thanks. I uh, love it. And you guys had a big chance on everything. Did you, uh, was there a place that you harder it? Or it was like a gift from uh, Tom Phillips himself, himself? or? Oh, yeah, it was a gift for winning one of the monthly prizes at some point. That oh. was a long time ago, though. I can't remember oh. exactly when I got it. Damn. Oh, damn. Love it. Ah, so man, please tell me more about yourself. How how did you start in games? Um, how did it all start it up? How did you become the rock star that you are today? <laughs> uh, well, uh, it started when I was 13, I think. Maybe 13. 12 even. Uh, my mom was studying uh, graphic design and animation at university. Okay. And as part of that course, she pirated a lot of software for our family computer, including <laughs> stuff like uh, Director and Flash and Photoshop and all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> so that's kind of that's kind of when I first saw all these programs and started playing around with them. Okay. At first, I started with Director because it was a lot easy to do, a lot easier to do really simple uh, actions and stuff in that. Mm -hmm. But I never really got anywhere with it. Mm. Flash I stuck with mostly because I was introduced to Newgrounds by my friends who went on there mm. and I realized I could like post the stuff that I was making in Flash and that got me quite a lot of attention and I liked that so I kept making more. That was awesome back in the days that where Newground was very the thing. I remember that uh, when I was at uh, university or even like high school. I was like, one day I will be on your ground and I'll be front page. I was like my old dream because like it was so, I, I just wanted to put all my content there and that was a big inspiration as well for myself to just make games and you know try to get attention. The system on Newgrounds is really fun because mm -hmm. you actually have to put a bit of skill into it before you make something that gets accepted, mm, yeah. which is completely different from what we have now where you can post any crap you want on YouTube or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you had to rate, and I think it had to have like a 2.5 rating or more, otherwise it won't get on the front page or it won't, it will just get deleted, right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't remember that. My first few things got deleted, but I'm not <laughs> surprised. I did not spend a lot of time on the first few things I made. Yeah. yeah. It was like stick figure animations with, well, with barely any animation at all. That was fun. <laughs> So that was with Flash, like it was uh, even not even called. It was not even with Adobe by, uh, back at that time. It was probably yeah, like Macromedia. Like Macromedia. Yeah, I think yeah. my first version was Flash four or five. And it did, I mean, it didn't even have transparency yet in the graphics. <laughs> you didn't have even alpha. Damn, that was a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, fun. Shit. And uh, I was about to say, like, uh, when did you start? I, I, you're a one man army, right? You do everything. Uh, yeah, everything except, uh, well, a few things. I don't do the music. I have someone who does music. Okay. I get my sound effects from different websites that sell sound effects. Okay. And uh, stuff like special cover arts and other bits of art, I'm sometimes too lazy to do, so I just outsource that to other people. Okay. But mostly everything else is me. Also, Wait. translations. I get help with those. Oh, it's, okay. It's it's English cool. and a bit of Polish. <laughs> Sweet. And uh, when did you start to code? I mean, coding for me, like I went through the traditional school and everything, and I could not even think of learning code by myself. So how did you do it? What was your special power? How did you, uh, how did you start uh, coding your first games? 
Yeah, coding, when we got taught it at high school, it was not taught very well, or maybe the languages they try to teach us just weren't very good. I got it. So I, I did not learn a lot in high school, or at least what I learned, I really hated, and I thought I would never do more of it. Okay, yeah. But despite that, I still went to university for computing science. Ah, okay. Because, well, I didn't like programming at the time, but I liked doing stuff with computers in general. Mm. And I figured that was the best course to do if I didn't want to be living in a basement in a few years. So that, 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 went, um, that went well because they taught languages like... Uh, Python and stuff to me for the first time, and that was a lot more fun than what we were doing at high school. Okay. okay. So, uh, yeah, I started programming then, and most of what I know now, I probably learned by second year at university because that's when we did object-oriented programming and stuff like Java. Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty similar to ActionScript three, which is what I'm using in Flash. Mm -hmm. So all the stuff that you know. I, I'm doing now, I pretty much learned in that second year at university. So you were a coder first and then an artist? Because I thought it was the other way around. Like you, No, you... no, I'm an artist first. I've been doing art for okay. a lot longer. Okay. I think I'm better at it than programming. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Because uh, animations I've been doing since I was like 12 or 13. Okay, okay. So, so that's be a, that's basically like the, your passion. Like If you had to choose between the two, you would, have, you would choose like art. I'd say so, but... It's not a choice you it's, have. it's much harder to make a living as an artist than as a programmer. Yeah. Totally so I, I I try to do a bit of both to to be safe. Because your art is amazing. I mean, I really love your your art style. I was playing uh, Bullet Hell Bullet Heaven too uh, just a few minutes ago. You well, you were there, and I really love your your art style. I can see that you've grown up through the years as well. Your art skills have grown up. So I mean, and you also. Or a kick-ass coder, so yeah, you got I, all the talents. <laughs> well, uh, I don't. I wouldn't say I'm a good coder. I, I'm, I'd say I'm. I'm a good software engineer. I okay. can make my code work, but if I had to like work with other programmers and they saw how badly written my stuff was, ah, okay. it would go very well. <laughs> but on the surface, it all works, but like it's not always done very well underneath. Well, as long as it works, right? The player. Don't, yeah, don't... that's the important thing, I guess. Yeah, I learned like uh, I remember uh, at one point uh, when I was working in the industry, uh, there was a couple of uh, coder arguing to each other. It's like, oh, this is not clean code, or this is ugly code, or whatever. And just somebody came and said, hey, by the way, guys, people don't play code; they play games. And yeah, it's just cool. like, bam! Just blasted. <laughs> just like broke the entire argument. It's like, okay, we don't care if it's ugly code. People play games, not code. So when I'm working by myself. Yeah. If I was working with other people, then it would be a different story, I guess. But no one else has to read my code except me, so that's good. <laughs> so all your games that you did, Bullet Hell and 1-2, uh, Epic Battle Fantasy, that's all by yourself? Yeah. And have you been able to... Uh, like, Epic Basil Battle Fantasy 1 has been uh, released uh, when, actually? At what year? Uh, I don't remember. A long time ago? I can check out on Concrete, uh, actually. 2000 and... 2009 maybe ah that's like the same time that we we arrived at berserk and was it your first game or your first uh, like the one that really uh, took off it was i think it was my first game that could be considered a game okay. the ones before that were more like interactive movies like you could click stuff some of them were dress up games they were really simple games and i don't know if i'd even call them that yeah i see the mecha dress up game <laughs> yeah, you can build robots by clicking on stuff. Like at the time, all I knew how to make was buttons, so that's all it is. It's just buttons that change the graphics. Really simple stuff. And then you made Epic Battle Fantasy. What was your inspiration on doing that? Like, what? Why? You just made a couple of. I mean, you made a couple of dress up game and then an RPG, which is like a big gap between the two. So how? Well, do you... Before I made any games, I just made animations that were kind of making fun of turn-based RPGs like Final Fantasy. Oh, okay. So I pretty much already had the art style for that done. It was just, you know, once I learned how to program, I just made them, you know, interactive, and that was that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so you first started by making parodies and stuff, and then reuse the assets and just complete them for making a game afterwards. Yeah, more or less. Uh, oh, I did. 
I did do animation for quite a few years for Newgrounds before I actually tried programming anything. And that that's pretty good because most of my animations were like video game parodies and they already they already looked like video games, they just weren't playable, so okay. all I had to add was some code. Okay. Okay, okay. And uh <laughs> have you been able to uh, to live from your, your games? I mean I see that you, you release like Epic Battle one, two, three, four, Bullet Heaven, there's also Adventure Story. Uh have you been able to, you know, just make that full time or did you have another job at the same time or Oh uh, well, I was lucky enough that my parents supported me for quite a long time. Okay. Until I finished university and a bit longer, that was very nice of them, very convenient. But uh, besides that, I think I would have been okay uh, supporting myself from Epic Battle Fantasy II and onwards. Okay. Like I, I wouldn't do that because the income is obviously not very reliable, and you don't know if your next game will be successful or not. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. So far, it had so far it's went pretty well for me. But at the time, I didn't know that, so I wouldn't be trying to support myself until much later. Okay, okay, good. Yeah. So it's like yeah, as, as soon as uh, Armor Games and Congregate started sponsoring my work, uh, my income was pretty pretty fine for my age, I guess. Did you go? Uh, did you contact them directly, like uh, Congregate and Armor Game, and just like say, hey, uh, I have this game, and would you want to sponsor it? No, actually, I didn't have to. I just kept posting my stuff on Newgrounds until they contacted me, and I was like, <laughs> "I was like, what? I didn't even know about these websites. I, I thought Newgrounds was the only place that had these things." <laughs> so that's pretty much how that happened. <laughs> I do remember Juicy Beast as well when they posted like their first game. Uh, they they just put it online and then and they put it on Newground, and then everybody was taking it from Newground and hosting it on all the their, their website. And they freaked out. It was like, hey, you should not host my game. So they just had it like the other way around. They, was like, they thought that people were stealing the game. Like, stop hosting my game. They were contacting everyone. And then uh, Armor Game or Congregate came and said, like, hey, we can pay you for doing that. It was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. But like, they, they were. It was it was very funny. Like, at first, they just did something and then it's like, oh, we can have money out of that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think a lot of the people who have been making content for Newgrounds like actually didn't realize you can make any money off it until they were already doing it for quite a long time, mm. me included. And now like, Newgrounds was sharing ad revenue, but that was that was it, and that that wasn't really that much money. And I thought that was basically what other sites were doing as well. I thought they were just like sharing ad revenue, but yeah. it turns out they were doing sponsorships as well, and that was. That was a much bigger deal. Yeah, yeah, we were uh, going through FGL by by uh, by the days, uh, like putting something there and then going to the auctions and everything. That's how yeah, I, I I tried FGL, but I never like I never actually sold any games through there. Ah, okay. Uh, because it it was uh it was a big jump from EBF two to EBF three in terms of the size of the games. Okay. And I didn't really have much luck selling EBF3 to anyone because I didn't make any massive games like that before. Okay. So Congregate offered me a performance-based deal where they'd yeah. like pay me based on how much traffic it brought for them over time, mm -hmm. which I took a gamble on because I thought EBF3 was worth a lot more than other sponsors were offering. Okay. And that worked out, luckily enough. Yeah, it's the, uh, you you said earlier you had like 10 million views, so I think it was a good uh, a good choice you made. Yeah, like uh, for web games, like big games like EBF3 don't really work that well anyway because most of the time you're better off just making lots of little games. Mm. But the deal still went well, and uh, I've been working with Congregate ever since. Even though other sponsors have tried to convince me otherwise, I'm just playing it safe now. Yeah. How did you react to having like a bazillion of people playing your game? I mean, you just said, said that you started with uh, making some animations, dress up games and everything, and then bam, suddenly you have three to five to 10 million views on your game. It, it wasn't really a big deal because I was eased into it. Like the first few things I posted on Newgrounds got a few thousand views. Okay. And then, like every everything I posted after that, got a bit more than the previous thing. Mm -hmm. Like. Uh, 
some of my early animations were already getting like half a million views on Newgrounds back when Newgrounds was a lot more popular than it is now. So like I got used to getting that many views pretty early. Okay. I, yeah. I think the thing that got the most views in a short amount of time was Epic Battle Fantasy 3. It got about a million views on Congregate in the first week it was up, which I, I think that was that was the most views I ever got on anything mm. like I ever posted anywhere. And uh, that was pretty fun, but I was on holiday at the time, so I wasn't like attached to my computer, clicking <laughs> refresh the whole time. So you just released and then you went on a vacation and that's it. Yeah, more or less. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what the plan was there, but I do remember that I was not at home when I was like checking that out. I'm a bit surprised. I think I, I think I probably just posted it right before going on holiday, which seems not like a wise thing to do. <laughs> well, if, was... if there's a bug, you have you can't do yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah I, I guess I just didn't expect it to get so much attention right away, and I figured, yeah, it, it'll it'll wait for me when I get back. It's not a long holiday. <laughs> and, but uh, not, not to do that anymore. Yeah. And how was the... it? was a lot easier when you were make, when I was making free games because it doesn't matter if it has a bug in it if it's free. You know. Yeah, that's a good point. On Steam, I have to be a lot more careful. Well, because... people do matter. You get like lots of comments saying "worst game, worst game ever." Well, yeah. uh, people trying to destroy you because of that bug. Say, "Hey, you should do your job as a game dev." There's a bug somewhere on my computer uh, running on the Commodore 64. Like. Dude, I'm sorry, but it's free. I mean, there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, nowadays, uh, what, what are you doing nowadays? So you release Bullet Heaven 2. We, we, I just saw that you have uh, two games on... Uh, on or You have one just released on Greenlight, right? Epic Battle Fantasy 3. Yeah, I passed Greenlight yesterday. Ooh, can, can, can you uh, post your... Uh, oh, it passed Greenlight already. Oh yeah, yeah, passed. Ah, nice, nice, nice. If you wanted to put a link in the chat, go ahead. And by the way, guys, if you can uh, permit, Matt. I've got the stats up on my blog if anyone wants to see those. But oh, yeah. Greenlight's pretty boring now. There's not much left to say about it. Yeah, I'll get thinking. What is pretty, uh, pretty boring, you said? All right, I posted it in the chat and I got a warning. Yeah, they should permit you. Hang on, they will permit you yeah. in a second. <laughs> Sorry, I guess the the yes votes and stuff. Okay. But yeah, my my stats for my green light thing were there, and green light's not what it used to be when I published DBF four back then. Like the requirements were much higher than they are now. Yeah. And um, now now you only need like a thousand votes or something like that to get green light, which isn't a big deal. Yeah, Steam is way more open, bro. Open, it, it, way more open than what it was back in the days. Like before, it was only games only by Valve, almost, or people who knew Valve personally. But now, anybody can get there. Yeah, Which, it's it's quite fortunate actually that Greenlight uh, opened up just as like the web market was dying, mm -hmm. and I was kind of mm -hmm. thinking about what to do next. I was considering making games for mobile phones, which I didn't really want to do, and then Greenlight appeared, and I'm like, hey, I'll do this instead. This is a much better idea. Okay, so that's when, uh, you, so, so you jumped on the stream team, on the Steam train, and yeah. uh, nowadays, how is it working? I mean, but at Heaven too, how was it, uh, did, did, was it a success? Has you been able to, uh, to pay your bills? EBF 4 was surprisingly successful, actually, okay. because, when you make like flash games for the internet, you kind of expect like most of the traffic and income from those to be like in the first few days, you know, mm -hmm. and then they kind of, everyone gets bored of the game after that, and you know they just play other games instead. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I expected from on Steam, but it's not like that. You get like a lot of sales and different events that kind of boost the sales and attention your games get like long okay. after you first published it. So like after the launch, I was like, hey, that's that's probably the most exciting part done. But it wasn't. I got featured in one of those flash sales they used to do. Okay. Where they do major discounts for a few hours. Yeah, yeah. And that was pretty lucky. I got a lot of attention there and a lot of money. And uh, that, that's when I realized, like, hey, this is pretty cool. I can make, like, Steam games now. Even, like, even if, like, Flash is killed off in browsers completely, I can still make, like, Flash games and just post them on Steam instead, and that'll probably do okay for me. Okay. So, 
at that point, I like kind of completely given up on making any mobile games anymore. Okay, so you just made the switch directly onto Steam, and now you're you're focusing on Steam only. Yeah, and uh, like EBF4 is still selling pretty well now, even though it's been on Steam for over two years, which is surprising to me. <laughs> but I guess Steam's a pretty different platform, and people just like browse around for old stuff and still play it. And how was the reception? I mean, I know that uh, Juicy Bees, for example, they made Nightmare Tower. They put it on the, on on Congregate and on the web, yeah. etc. And then they made a deluxe version. You know, one with full screen, working at 60 FPS, way yeah. more stuff. Put it on Steam, and it backslash at them. It backlash at them. Actually, people say like, "Hey, if, if you don't want to pay anything, just go on Congregate." Like, why do you? want us to pay for a game that's for free already so they had like a huge of negative comments oh. uh for for that so did it happen to you as well or i didn't know that i thought their steam version of nightmare tower was really good yeah well at first like i think that they kind of caught in fire so they had to explain everything but uh they told me that like, i think it, I, down the line it went okay but they told me like when they released it it was a nightmare because a lot of people were saying hey don't buy this game go there instead it was like hey mm -hmm. it's not the same and everything so i like that their games are on steam now because the free versions had a lot of microtransactions and i hate that stuff oh, okay so i'd rather just buy them on steam but i can see why some people might be bothered by that uh for me everything went better than expected like at first there were just a few people like really mad in the forums that, you know, it's a Flash game, it's coming to Steam, it used to be free, stuff like that. Yeah. But it wasn't really many people like that, and most of them got pretty bored, like, after the first few days. Okay. So, like, I expected a lot worse, but I guess no one really cared, so that was good. And I don't, I don't know why, though. Uh, maybe it's because it's such a long game that, you know, people don't really care if they have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Even even people who have played the free version still were up for buying it again. But oh. I'm guessing it's just because it's a really long game with, like, 20 hours of content in it. So people don't feel tricked. <laughs> but you said that EBF4, the game I was playing just, like, 10 minutes ago, uh, it has microtransaction in it, right? It's got a expansion pack so oh, okay. it's it's just one transaction and it's not micro so yeah, yeah. Say. so it's more than an expansion so if they, they can go on steam and get the same thing but like they're buying the, the whole version right there yeah they get everything plus uh like higher okay. resolution graphics and it comes with the soundtrack but uh yeah the steam version is the best version but the congregate version also has pretty much all the same content in it it's just stuck in a browser which okay. makes it a little tiny bit worse oh. all right it seems and like congregate, congregate still don't want to add full screen to their flash games which annoys me mm. immensely it's a shame and I, I don't think they're gonna add it ever now that flash isn't popular anymore so that sucks you mean that the ads on full screen I... yeah no in congregate you can't expand your flash games to full screen oh okay, okay gotcha 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 like, you can do that on Armor Games and Newgrounds, just not on Congregate, which kind of sucks. By the way, I was playing Bullet Heaven 2. It looks like in Flash. Was it, was it, has it been done in Flash? The, yeah. Uh, it's it's all in Flash, but it's like running 60 FPS, super yeah. crisp, full screen. It's made with the Starling framework. Ah, there you go. And it uses a program called Dragon Bones for the animations. Okay. Okay. Which like which converts your flash animations into a form that uh, Starlink can use and hardware accelerate everything. Okay. And okay. so it, it runs pretty well. It's not the best demo that it's not the best demonstration of Flash's capabilities because I didn't do the best job managing memory and stuff like that. So the game okay. does stutter sometimes. Okay. But that's that's probably my fault and not like Flash's <laughs> fault. <laughs> Okay, so so uh, yeah, you can you can get decent performance in Flash. I don't think it's like amazing, but it's it's good enough for games like Bullet Heaven. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I was very uh, impressed by all the stuff because you know we used uh, starting for the the last game the, the last game we're doing uh, as on Bile, and uh, we can put it like on HD with full screen and everything running at 60 FPS. But basically, it's just an idle game, you know. So there's not much animation, not as much as in Bullet Heaven 2. So I was very yeah. impressed that it can go like this size and run at 60 FPS. Yeah, 
But for the main epic battle fantasy games, I'm still sticking to traditional Flash stuff. Okay. No, uh, no hardware acceleration, which is one of the things I was very worried about when I published EBF4 on Steam, because I thought a lot of people would be complaining about that. Uh, you know, it runs like crap because it does. It runs very badly, and okay. uh, I got well, a lot less complaints about that than I expected. You were very lucky, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised. <laughs> like mo most of the people that complained about that like still left good reviews like they did the review and then at the end they're like yeah I just wish it ran a bit better okay. but I don't I don't think anyone who left a bad review actually mentioned like the performance being an issue which is weird like they all they all had other complaints about the game like oh the sense is uh, uh, the style of humor is too stupid or something like that okay, okay. or I don't know how to leave the first town in the game help <laughs> Oh, those comments make me laugh all the time. Like, uh, I, I yeah. there are some beautiful pearl in there. I remember when we made uh, Heroes Arm. It was a Zelda, uh, Zelda type game, and people said like, "Why can't the character fly?" It's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, he can't yeah. as a human. Why did he... I don't know? Like zero out of five. It's weird that people are leaving bad reviews about stuff that's really stupid and not about the performance, which yeah. is really bad, and I deserve more bad reviews for that. <laughs> well, it's internet, right? I guess, I guess with, with turn-based RPGs, it's not as important, I guess, because mm. most of the most of turn-based RPGs on Steam are like not technically brilliant. Like They're all made in like RPG Maker, or they look like Undertale. Yeah. They're just like not very impressive technically mm -hmm. so that's probably why i can get away with it Good point. so i i guess i'm thankful for that and you have your hardcore fans i mean you are making yeah. the series since uh 2009 so it's been already eight years more or less that you're uh, yeah. so you build a strong community so those guys can leave you a good com good comments and everything yeah, it's it's hard to say like how many people that play the game on Steam have played it before in the past, mm -hmm. like or, or have seen the previous games. I wish I had data on that to know like how many people who bought the game are already familiar with the series and how many people are like new people from Steam who have never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. But I guess I won't know. But from the reviews, uh, from the reviews, it sounds like most people who play the game are familiar with me at least a little bit. Sweet. So it turns out that uh, you you now you are living from that, right? You are making that as a full time job. Yep. Okay. Sweet. And uh, what's your next plan? What's in, what's in the under the hood? Why were you cooking um, these days? Well, at, at the moment, um, well, I did the whole green light thing for EBF three because okay. I'm gonna put it on Steam for free so people can play it, and it'll be ah. like a demo for the future games, basically. Oh, okay. 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 So you just. So it's like, hey, play this. If you like it, buy my other games. They're basically the same. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And, and uh, that's that. I don't, I don't know how well that will work. I'm interested to see because I know some other developers have done that on Steam, but it doesn't look like a lot of people are doing that, which is strange because a lot of the games that end up on Steam do have like earlier versions made in Flash mm -hmm. that are like pretty forgotten now. But it would be interesting if more people like posted their old Flash games on Steam. Now that the entry requirements are so low. Yeah. Yeah, we we're thinking that at Berserk having a massive uh, compilation, like the Berserk compilation, and just put every game we made into a bundle and give that for free or, I don't know, something like that, you know. Uh, we have made uh, some of the... Uh, some of our game has been uh, converted into Unity, so those can be running like at full screen, super fast and everything. So we could do like a, an HD version of all that and say like, okay, those, all those six game in HD for three bucks, for example. But we don't know how much it will pay. So we don't know if it yeah. will be good or not, so. Well, Edmund McMillan did a collection of his old Flash games called the Basement Collection. Okay, but it's it, and, it's Edmund McMillan though. Yeah, I mean it's, uh, it's basically like the, the big rock star. So whatever he does. Yeah, but uh, it didn't get received that well on Steam. Ah, okay. Oh. Because he put a price tag on it, and a lot of people were like, oh. "Hey, these games aren't really worth money." Oh, that's interesting. But uh, and, and of course, a lot of them didn't really run well 
either because they were all like physics games made in Flash. So okay, okay. not not a great recipe. Okay, so you just but, uh, but that that collection was quite interesting because I mean, it shows like it's not that hard to like bundle all of your old Flash games together and just put them on Steam. Mm -hmm. Just you got to ask yourself how much they're worth, I guess. Mm. Well, if you put them all on, if you don't give something special, uh, whoops, I lost you. All right, there you go. If you don't put something special, I don't know if uh, if it will be received well. I think he uh, he expanded on most of them. He added new levels to oh, a lot okay. of the games, and I guess people still aren't happy. Okay, interesting. Yeah, like uh, well, that comforted me though because uh, we made a game. Uh, we made a sequel for a game called uh, Forensic Frigate Two, and uh, we never released it because uh, we wanted to put it on Flash. But then, like Flash, like the, the web games were dying, and like there's no much money done to be. Uh, there's no much more money to be done in Flash, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, not in that particular way. Uh, so I was thinking, okay, maybe I should put it on Steam, like at three bucks or something. So you're like, hey, you like the first one? Here's the second one on Steam, you know. So I was wondering if I just put it, just put the Flash version right there, like just put the Swift in there. So like, there you go. I don't know if it will be received well or so. So yeah, actually, I didn't know that it went so well for you on Steam. Yeah, I'm, I'm still surprised. Sweet. So okay, EBF three for free, and now it's gonna give you a nice boost on EBF four, I believe. Yeah. And what else? What's I like? Is there another game you're working on? What are, what are you doing these days? I'm working on EBF five. Oh, there you go. Probably Sweet. what everyone wants me to talk about. <laughs> I'm just giving you a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's going pretty well, but slowly because. I have uh, EBF 4's uh, success on Steam has put a lot of pressure on me. Okay. And now I'm like I'm like afraid of doing anything wrong now. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. I because uh, it's easy when you don't expect your game to be huge to like just do whatever you want and then publish it. But then if you're making a sequel to a successful game, you have to be like ah, yeah. really careful that you don't mess anything up. And you have to uh, like top what you did before and that's a very yeah. hard I mean you already had like 10 worlds and a shit ton of different yeah. environments and epic battles and stuff I mean I was just playing EBF4 and I was impressed by the amount of content that the game had you know I just scrapped the surface but I was like dude that's that's insane all the the balancing the the items the skills tactics it was like whoa i saw it as a game dev not as a player and as a game dev i was like this is insanely hard to code and balance and and push it out there so i can't believe how you can top that you know like, i can i can i understand the the, the pressure you should have mm. the thing is that uh, ebf4 was like Never, I never planned on putting it on Steam when I was making it, so okay. I was only comparing it to like other Flash games, and I was like, hey, that's it already looks better than most of them, so mm -hmm. I wasn't too worried. But now, like, I'm competing with, like, you know, everything on Steam, yeah, and it makes me a lot more worried, even though I shouldn't be. Mm. Like, I see all these fancy trailers. For, you know, a lot of people put, like, a lot of effort into their trailers. They make a lot of scenes that aren't actually in the game, you know, just to make the trailer look good. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. It's like, my trailer's going to look crap. My game's going to look crap because I don't want to put all this work into the presentation and making it look all shiny, yeah. you know? It's like, everything's like, it's it's just, everything looks higher quality on the surface now. And mm. I, I feel, like, more pressured because of that. But I guess most of that stuff doesn't really matter because... Once people play the game, they'll get addicted and they'll like it. But yeah, uh, it, but, I, I feel like there's more pressure on me now. But uh, that's interesting. The surface thing, actually, seeing that uh, on the surface, it's uh, it more like, look. It looks more polished than the actual game. Uh, that's an yeah. interesting point you have there. I think that you will not have that problem because it's Epic Battle Fantasy V, which means yeah. that you already have millions and millions of people 
already not maybe like waiting on it on their basement but still like they know the franchise and everything so they won't be very hard to convince say like hey here's a new game you want to play it like you like the, the other four now we're gonna you're gonna like this one you know so you might not have to try to uh impress uh more people or i, I try to impress them more uh i think you won't have that problem basically yeah i think so too i'm just you know a bit worried about things I shouldn't be worried about yeah because it's a much bigger market I'm in now and I'm not like you know on congregate most of my games were like in the top few games when they were published on the website and I didn't have much to worry about because I know I knew that almost everyone on congregate liked my games mm -hmm. but on Steam it's not like that it's like I'm just like a tiny tiny section of the market now and I, I know that if everyone on Steam tried my game, most of them would hate it. Mm. But the only ones playing it are the people that will probably like it. Mm. So that's 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 what I need to focus on, you know. I don't have yeah. to try to please everyone. I just have to please the people that actually want to play the game. Yeah, Which, and, and that's that's hard to keep in mind sometimes. Yeah, because they will talk about your game and they will sell it for you. I mean, they will say like, "Hey, this is the best game ever," and they, they'll go on. You know, so you don't need to try to bring. Uh, more audience to the game just try to satisfy the community you have already that's a good point yeah mm. well uh, the other thing that's making EBF5 take a lot more time is that uh, the previous games all recycled a lot of R's and as a result like the art style in EBF4 is very inconsistent okay because there's a lot like ev all the art in EBF4 was made like years apart, so uh, uh, if you pay attention, like then you can probably tell that okay. everything looks slightly different. And I'm trying to fix that with EBF5, and I'm like redoing most of the art and trying to like keep the art style consistent for once. Okay. And that's that's another thing that most people probably won't care about as much as I do, but uh, we'll yeah. see. A lot a lot of people have been telling me that my animations look a lot better now but we'll see how many people actually notice when the game comes out yeah. well right there I think it will feel even more polished if you just put everything on the same uh, standard I think that would look even more polished so people really yeah, I think see so that. too. that's the kind of stuff that as an artist you can detect very easy so like okay yeah it's standardized you know all the stuff looks the same but as a player, like for me, for example, I'm a coder, and before I was working with artists, I would not even have noticed. I would just say like, oh, yeah. it looks better now, but I would have not have the words to say why, you know? So I think that it, it will it will show that, oh, the, show, the, the game looks so better now, but the reason will be like, you have standardized all the, the, the assets. Yeah. So how did you, f how did you, okay. When I made SkyQuest, my biggest uh, headache was the balancing. Balancing was killing me. Like the, the all the ways, all the pattern you can use. Like uh, uh, like you have, you have skills, you have uh, tactics, you have different ways to go, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How do you handle balancing? Oh uh, well, I don't think EBF4 was that well balanced. Okay. Well, some parts were. There's there's too many skills in the game and a lot of them aren't very useful. That's okay. that's one of the main like criticisms that I'm gonna fix in the future. Okay. Uh, like about half the skills you never really need to use, but uh, for the most part is it's not it's not too hard to figure out all the stats and stuff because I just base it on the previous game and fix whatever was wrong with that one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And it's there's it's not very complicated. I just do what I did before but try to do a bit better. Okay, okay, okay. So and uh, most of the things kind of balance themselves, you know, like the way like the scaling systems in RPGs work, you know, leveling up, it's kind of like an exponential curve. Mm -hmm. If you ever get stuck on anything, you can just go back, fight one or two monsters, you level up and you're a lot stronger, you know, and then the boss that was too hard is easier now. And yeah. I think in RPGs, a lot of the balancing kind of sorts itself out with the leveling up system. As long, you know, as as long as like the kind of uh, progression line is like sloped properly, okay. then you shouldn't really get stuck anywhere. Well, I'm impressed because uh, again, like for me, it was very very difficult. I had to 
replay my old game, my game like for 70 times in a row. I do remember that I was playing it and then I was like, okay, about level 40, uh, the balancing is not quite there. So mm -hmm. I'm going to fix it and then start back from the beginning and go back. So I played my game way too much. I got sick of it at the end. So did, did you play your own game like, like that as well? Not very much. Yeah. I don't think I... I only played through EBA 4 like once or twice all the way through. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't even play like New Game Plus all the way through. Okay. I, I just programmed that and, and didn't bother playing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Oh man, you're But what genius. I basically do is, uh, no, I, I like, uh, I figure out like what level my character should be at, like how strong they should be at mm -hmm. during each point of the game. Okay. And then, if they're not at that level, when I play through it, I like change the experience different monsters give or whatever to make sure they okay. always stick to what I want them to be. Okay. Okay. And uh, that works okay. It, it usually requires like one one or two playthroughs to make sure like your characters are leveling up when they should be. Okay. Okay. So you said. And uh, there's also a lot of let's plays that I watch though. Like I don't play the game much myself, but I do watch a lot of other people play it okay. and make sure they're on track with everything to try to figure out what they're doing wrong. And uh, there was a lot of balancing issues in EBF3, which I think I sorted out now. Like uh, in EBF3, you had permanent stat boosting items and one of them was evade. And if you didn't share evade evenly among your team members, Ones that didn't get any evade, well, not evade actually, accuracy. The ones that didn't get any accuracy would barely be able to hit anything, okay. which was not good because most people would like give a stat boosting item to like their favorite character, and then like all other characters would be crap. Mm -hmm. And I had to sort that out. <laughs> I, I I guess accuracy and evade is tricky because it's really annoying if everything misses in the game. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know that. Uh, yeah, usually when I make that, it's uh, I I tend to make like okay, you only make fifty percent damage instead of just completely miss or you know make it critical or something like that. But uh, yeah, just missing all the stuff is really annoying. But yeah, I, I find that I find that in the EBF games, most of the stats balance themselves out, and anything that doesn't, like your players will tell you, and I'll I'll just take their word for it. I'm like. Everyone's saying this attack is too strong. I'll make it weaker. I, I don't like play through it myself to test okay. everything. I, I just listen to what players say. If everyone's saying like, "Hey, this guy's too hard. This guy's too easy," I'm like, "Okay, they're probably right. I'll change that." Okay, so you just update the game. And that's it. Yeah, sometimes it takes a few months, but I'll usually make those changes. If, if a lot of people are saying the same thing, then I'm like, "Yeah, they're probably right." Okay. okay. And, uh, okay, so now you're working on EBF 5. Do you have a schedule, like a tight schedule, saying, like, okay, I have to work 40 hours a week, or do you just work when you feel like it, or or do you have, like, uh, how do you stay motivated? I'm interested mm. to know about that. It's hard to say. My uh, my work schedule is pretty... It's, it's not very regular. Like, when I'm working, I'm trying to get 40 hours a week. Okay. And I've got an app that helps me track how much time I'm actually working when I'm at the computer. Okay. Which is pretty useful because I know when I'm slacking off. Hmm. But it's also not that accurate because it only actually counts time when I'm actually at the computer doing stuff. And if I like stop to think for five minutes, it won't count that. Yeah. Or if I take a quick break, you know. So, uh, but no, it, it does a good job. It's called, uh, what's it called? It's called Rescue Time. And Rescue it, time. Uh, it tells me what I'm doing when I'm at the computer. Okay. And I add in some extra times for breaks and stuff, and then I can get a pretty good estimation of how much I'm working every week. Okay. And I guess that, that does work out to maybe 40 hours on average. Okay. If I'm doing something fun, probably longer. If I'm doing something really boring, then probably less. Mm. Which, uh, with that, actually, that, that varies a lot depending on what I'm doing. Like, programming tires me out quite quick, quickly, so I do a lot less programming. But stuff like data entry for like stats and items and stuff like that mm -hmm. is not very like stressful on my yeah. brain. It's just really simple work. I'm like, how much damage does this do, whatever. And I, I can do that for like all day without getting tired. 
So if I'm doing something like more relaxing like that or drying, then I can easily do like more than 50 hours a week okay. without being too tired. And do you have like a rhythm? Like at the beginning of the day, for example, you have 100% of your brain power, so you do a little of programming, and then when you're exhausted, you go to art or items or balancing? Mm, no, I, I do things in like batches. So like I do like all of the programming for this, then all of the art for this, okay. then all of the icons, all of this. Like I, I don't go back and forth between different between different uh, tasks very much because I, I find things go a lot slower if I do that. But uh, yeah, mostly my, my rhythm for the day is uh, I get up, have coffee, then work a few hours, then I have an, a can of iron brew, which is very good uh, Scottish soft drink. And that's caffeinated as well, so okay. that keeps going a bit longer. But that's about it. And then I just keep working until I get tired, which, which yeah, depends on what, what exactly I'm doing. And uh, yeah, if I'm burned out after that, then I just stop. Okay, so it looks super free and super friendly. I mean, uh, just like you don't really have like a something. Okay, I have to wake at eight and work until five or something. And I'm just like, yeah, I work whenever I feel like it, and I stop when I'm tired. Yeah, I, I don't have Sweet. any deadlines really. Uh, I I do try to uh, I do try to make sure I'm always posting like progress of some sort on my blogs okay. like if it goes for like days and days without me posting any progress i feel like i should be doing something okay. but for, for the most part i find that blogging is a good way of keeping motivated because mm -hmm. it shows like myself and it shows to other people that i am actually working on stuff and i have you know uh results to show for it yeah and so it you, yeah and it, it's also good documentation because I can like go back and see like on what order I worked on everything and what I did first and whatever. That's a good point. It gives you a good excuses to work. It's like, okay, I should post something. What did I do in the last week? Oh, I didn't do much. Okay, so I really should give a little push and do something to uh, to share it to the community. So yeah, it's kind of a, not a deadline, but kind of a little pressure there that helps you keep going. Yeah, it's like little progress reports that are also like yeah. previews that people can enjoy. Yeah. Which uh which, which I'm surprised more people don't do it cuz you see a lot of game developers that only like show a progress report like once a month or less. And I find that very strange. I'm just used to doing it almost daily. Almost daily? Whoa. Yeah, I, I post something almost every day when I'm working. That's it, it's cool. not always it's not always stuff I make. Sometimes it's just like unrelated stuff or fan arts or stuff like that but i do try to post something almost every day okay okay well that's a great way to to keep your uh, community in touch i mean uh, at berserk i know that we suck at that at, at that point uh i mean we had like a lot of people on facebook and on twitter but we were not posting anything like maybe once a month or something like that and which is uh, which is bad, you know, <laughs> it's very bad. But like everybody at Berserk was like, man, I'm not really the kind of guy who posts stuff online on Twitter and etc. you know. But that is yeah. a problem that we need to fix. And uh, the way I, we finally fix it is my face being on stream every single day, you know. So every time of the week, yeah. actually, I, I put my face on Twitch and, you know, try to work and show to people what I'm uh, what the progress am I and you know that keeps me motivated you know it's good for getting feedback early on as well yeah like a lot of the stuff that I get feedback on I wouldn't be bothered ever changing once the game's released but mm -hmm. if people tell me to fix it early on I might like if I'm showing off animations for the monsters and some people are like that one animation looks really wrong or really crap or something like that I'll probably fix it if I've just made it the day before mm -hmm. but months and months later I probably won't bother fixing something like that so it's quite useful to get feedback right away on some things and I do post pretty much everything that I make like every monster and weapon and stuff like that mm -hmm. the only thing I hide is like the final boss and sometimes I don't even hide him so okay. yeah people pretty much see the whole game in parts before it's published <laughs> and so a few people complain about that they're like you post too many spoilers but most people are okay with it okay yeah, that's a big discussion actually of like when should you talk about your game? Should you start like on day one, you, you start posting your stuff online or should you wait like until you have something beautiful to show like a trailer or a demo or should you just wait until the very end and say like, hey, here's a complete game? 
I don't know. I just post everything pretty much as I make it. Yeah. E- even if it's something that's probably not going to go anywhere, I just post it. I'm like, hey, I made this. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'll make a game out of it someday, whatever. Hmm. But, yeah, I just post things as I make them. And that's about as far as I go for marketing, really. Yeah. Because yeah, anyway, like when you post something on your blog, not the uh, entire 10 million of people will actually read that blog you know so yeah maybe like the hundred or thousand of people who do read your blog and do get that post will get maybe a spoiler so it's much that's it's not much of a concern yeah most of the people that see this stuff i guess want to see it so it's fine Mm. and more and the casual players will just see the finished game once it's done which is nice i don't know for, for the game i'm working on right now i always work always do a uh, type of work a for example on a stream and then the rest outside of the stream because i don't want to try i try to not spoil the rest of the game so i'm just building levels on the stream uh, because it's way more entertaining as well you see like a, a building levels is way more visual you know so i tend to yeah. do that online and then all the boring stuff like en- engine and story and not boring stuff but you know Something that takes more time and not visually attractive, I, I keep that for the offline. So, I wouldn't want to stream me working ever. I feel <laughs> like it would be I feel like it would be both boring to watch but also distracting for me. <laughs> like, well, it is hard at the beginning, but then your brain kind of like you, there's a part of your brain doing the entertaining and the other part doing the, the visual. And since you are uh, an artist first, uh, that would be very interesting actually. I mean, for me, I, I, I dude, I, I stream code, and for me, like it is frightening. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, how can I say that? Like, uh, seeing somebody code is not super interesting, you know. It's when he compiles and shows the result that's interesting. But just the code itself, unless you're a coder and you are interested to know more about coding, yes. But visually, it's like watching somebody do cross puzzles, you know. So. I have to be like explosive and well, do lots of animation and everything, but you would not have that problem. You just show like, hey, this is how I animate stuff. This is how I do. And like, sure, mm-hmm. you don't need animation to do animation. Might be okay. Yeah, animation might be reasonably interesting, but I think the way that I draw in Flash is just really boring because it's all vector art, which doesn't exactly look very natural when you're doing it. Uh, I don't. I don't agree. I mean, uh, it's like. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not like doing like pencil lines and sketching stuff. I'm just kind of doing like line, oh, okay. line, okay. stretch this line over here, put this over here. Okay, and I think okay. it's I think it's really boring to watch. I find it boring to do sometimes. So. <laughs> okay. Like, but, uh, but are you drawing with the mouse, or you said that you saw about circles hmm. and lines? So I used to draw with the mouse, but now I do it with a tablet. Okay. And I, I, I kind of just stuck to the same style, I guess. Okay. Maybe I could, I could have not done it that way anymore, but I do. I, I just, I don't know. I'm not very good at just getting really nice lines unless I use the line tool. <laughs> okay. But still, it will be interesting. I mean, you are building something. I know that uh, uh, Gonzo made some uh, some stream as well about like he him. Uh, building some visuals and animation and stuff. I don't know. I, maybe I'm trying to convince you to jump on, bur- on board the Twitch train, but uh, yeah, still I, I think that visually it's interesting. I might do like a time lapse recording at ah. some point. Ah. but I don't know. We'll see if I ever get around to that. <laughs> we'll see in the future. How about we ask some questions for the, the audience, my friend? All right. Uh, we got the Exile Freak asking, uh, what what has been the most difficult challenge to create the games? Mm, I don't know. I wouldn't say anything is particularly difficult. Most of it is just time consuming. It's like if you ever get stuck on anything, you just kind of have to give it more time, and it'll figure itself out eventually. Like if if you don't know how to do something, you can just like go read lots of forum threads about other people who did the same thing. Okay. Eventually you're, you'll figure it out. Uh, I'd, I'd say like the most challenging stuff is stuff that you have to do, but is completely different from anything you've ever done before. Okay. Like the first time I was publishing a Steam game, EBF4, like I had no idea how I, I was supposed to add all the Steam features and stuff. Yeah. You know, so that, that really panicked me. It's like, 
I don't know how to get Steam achievements working in Flash and all the other stuff, but I gave it some time. I looked at, like, I, I just kind of stalked other developers who released Flash games on Steam, and I figured out a few different ways of doing it, and it kind of all sorted itself out in the end. But, uh, yeah, the most stressful stuff is just stuff that you've never done before, okay. and you'll have to kind of give it some time to figure it out. It's often stuff that are not directly game related, right? Like uh, yeah, like, like posting it's... your game online and marketing and like I don't know jack shit yeah. about that. Yeah, uh, making a trailer is annoying if you only have to do it once a year and you forget how to do video editing. Yeah, making a game is half the battle, and then you have to promote and trailers and shit. Yeah, totally. We got uh, Super Mario World asking, uh, when you first started, were you concerned with PR, and what did you do? Ooh. Mm. Uh, Sexy question. PR is quite funny, because... Like, when I started, I was just like every other stupid kid on the internet, and I was just, like, rude to everyone. And, like, if someone, like, gave me criticism, I'd be like, oh, I don't think you could do better, and stuff like that. <laughs> But uh, Newgrounds, I think, trained me out of that because on Newgrounds, like, everyone's rude if the situation calls for it or even if it doesn't. So if, if you're, like, being really rude to people who are leaving comments to you, more people will see that and I'll just start, start making fun of you because you're an asshole, you know? And uh, I, I learned pretty early on, like, from, from comments on Newgrounds that it, it doesn't pay to be rude to people because you'll just make more people provoke you for fun. You know, if if you fight back against trolls, more trolls will join in and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it's best just to be polite and you know do your best not to not to annoy anyone. Yeah. So I, I learned that really early on, just from Newgrounds, because everyone's really honest there. A lot of a lot of time, uh, uh, I was about to say something. Underground, uh, I was trying to be super polite. Yeah, if somebody goes super rude against me, like, go fuck yourself, Bizarre Studio, I hate you, whatever. And just reply and say, like, hey, that's a good point, thanks. And just reply something stupid like that, you know, just like, I like potatoes and caps, whatever. And yeah. then when they saw, when they saw I replied, uh, most of the time, the guy just apologized and said, oh, man, I'm sorry. I didn't thought, like, I was angry and I like your games and thank you very much. And blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, but why did you just tell me I'm a motherfucking stupid guy? But, you know, just like, just replying with love or just like random stuff, like I like turtles, uh, the guy usually just going the other way around and it's just like oh i'm sorry i'm sorry i'd say i'm more like if i'm if i'm really annoyed by someone i try to be kind of like passive aggressive yeah. towards them and kind of insult them in a really subtle way that they won't they won't be able to like say anything back to me because they won't yeah. be sure if i'm insulting them or not yeah well it's a form of creativity creativity i mean if you can reply something that will be entertaining for other people to watch, you're creating something. So you are yeah. actually, I mean, making games is making people laugh and making people entertain. So you can do that as well as replying a comment. So people can yeah. have some joy out of that, you know? Most of the time you're better off just not replying to a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. I on, on my Facebook page, I used to just like randomly ban people that annoyed me. Okay. But I stopped doing that when a lot of people were like messaging me. It's like, hey, why did you ban me? I don't think I did anything particularly bad, did I? And I got fed up with that, so I just stopped banning people. Yeah. So now, now if people just leave annoying comments, I just do my best to ignore them. Yeah, yeah it's really hard. Like uh, Taking care of comments is a craft on its own. It's very hard. And I know that after 5 p.m., I don't go read comments. I don't want to expose myself because I'm exhausted. I am cranky, I am whiny, and I don't want people to say like, hey, that you suck, and you have a stupid face. I would be like, <laughs> that's not true. Man. But at the beginning of the day, I was like, ha, that's fun. So, yeah, for the most part, I don't get that many mean comments, but I do my best to avoid them. Mm -hmm. And a few ways of doing that, I think, are to uh, make sure you never make any promises, because mm -hmm. then people will be very upset if you don't meet those. And I don't really promise anything ever. Like, I don't even announce my release dates for any of my games until, like, a week before they're ready. Yeah. So, like, I, I can't really let anyone down because I'm not promising anything. 
so how so do you respond how do you respond to like hey when's the release date of this just say i don't know i say like 2032 or something like that <laughs> okay okay <laughs> but uh yeah either that or just, i just ignore them yeah Yeah, it's really hard. I mean, for just ships and beats, people are keep asking me like, "When's release date? When's release date?" And I'm like, "I don't know when the game will be done." I guess. I mean, yeah. if I release it too soon to make you happy, you won't be happy because the game will be crap. So it has to be finished. And I like how uh, uh, the guy who made the Game of Thrones, it's like a George, uh, G R R Martin. How is his name again? Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, the, Mark. the the uh, yeah he said like every time uh, people ask like when is uh, when is the sixth book coming out they say well I'm making one page at a time you know it's gonna happen sometime, yeah but I, one I've page heard that about him yeah I've, so, I've, that he likes to give annoying replies to yeah. people so I like that quote saying that well the one yeah. line of code at a time my friend sorry yeah yeah that's probably the way to do it totally ah uh, we got another question my friend are you ready We got Monkey Man saying, "How did you come up with your main characters? Example, any inspiration for No Legs from somewhere?" Uh, well, Matt's obviously loosely based on me. The rest are. Oh, actually, let's let's think about this. Uh, well, yeah, Matt's based on me. Long hair, bad clothing, like swords. It's it's like me from when I was like. A super young teenager okay. just drawing crappy drawings of myself okay so that's where that came from uh natalie is like more or less my ideal girlfriend so that's where she came from uh lance was just some random guy i drew and gave him like personality after and well he he has guns and stuff because That's not what the other characters have, so that's about it. He's kind of different from them. He's also a baddie most of the time. He's a bit of a villain. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like that—that's where those guys came in, and like from there, I'm just like trying to make every new character I make just different from everything I've done before, mm -hmm. which is getting hard sometimes with some of the bosses. Like that that that's the same that's the same that went into uh, making Anna for EBF four. She's just basically all the traits that the other characters don't have. Okay. Like her hair is a different color, she uses a different weapon, she has a different personality from everyone else. You know, that's pretty much just what I do with every character moving forward. Okay. So you just had a bunch of character already and say, Okay, how can he or she be different? Like nobody has that type of trait, so let's make something like this. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, nice. And uh, No Legs in particular. Uh, no Legs was originally an idea that a girl in my geography class drew. She just drew a random cat, and she says, like, that's No Legs, the cat. And then I stole it. <laughs> But I drew it better than she did, so that's it. Sweet. Simple. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, if, if I were to give her credit, then her name is Lindsay, so... Shout out to her, I guess. <laughs> She always reminds me that all of my success is thanks to her, but it's not. Okay, so yeah, she gets like a big percentage and everything. Nah. She just drew a crappy little cast, and. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got another question here by Jolson Mug. Uh, hang on, is that yeah. Jolson Mugoff is asking, "What should a new game developer do to instigate and build up a fan base?" I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Obviously, your obviously, the landscape is very different now from when I started. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't, I don't know what you would do today, but I would say just release games for free on as many platforms as you can, and then hopefully lots of people will play them because they're free, and then you can make sequels that are better, and you can charge money for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's probably what I would do. Because otherwise it's going to be hard to get any attention. Especially if you're just like making your first game. Like no one's going to care. Yeah. You know, especially if you put a price tag on it. Mm. I think you sh should try releasing stuff for free for a few years. Unless you like, get uh, super lucky and make Undertale. And then like bam, you explode, everything explode. I don't think that Undertale was the guy's first game though, was it? He's uh, made quite a few things before. He made the hack... 
I think he made hack like uh, hard bound the hacks. Mm. But I'm, I'm not familiar. I'm, I'm not familiar sure. with the development process of Undertale, but I think it had like quite a big fan following before it was even released. Ah, uh, maybe. Well, I know that he made lots of music for uh, for other stuff, so I think that yes, he had a lot of fans. But I think it was uh, yeah. his first games. So I think that he came from another uh, another domain, like making music for mm. other animations and stuff like that. So, but. Uh, yeah, that you, you still have a point. Like he released the free content on the internet first, and then he made a game. So. Yeah, I, I think that's true of most like in these successes. Mm -hmm. You only hear about like their big games, but most of them have been working on a lot of smaller projects for a long time that never really went yeah. anywhere. And uh, me personally, I I made like free web content for like five or six years before I made any money. So mm. yeah, so that that's how long it takes to make a fan base, I guess. Yeah, it takes a, it takes a long while. Uh, but yeah, that's a good point actually. Release release uh, free content on internet, whatever it is. If you're making videos or animations or whatever, release it some for free and then check out for the money side. The money will follow. Uh, how about like if one less? Lucky. If you're lucky. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a good addendum. Uh, how about like one last question, my friend? And then like it's already been an hour we're interviewing, so. Go like one last question and then I'll let you go to making EBF five. Uh, I can stay longer if you want. Yeah, well, we, we can. We still have a bunch of questions, so we can do I that. Mean, I don't mind. Well, are you guys in the chat? If you guys have any question in the chat, please let me know on the stream RPG. You can add it up there, and uh, we'll do that. And also, I think that you have uh, some stuff to give away to us, my friend, right? Matt. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Got those Steam codes, I think. Sweet. So we get some free games coming up as well, guys. Uh, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, there's uh, lots of... Uh, okay, what's your favorite part of making a game? Hmm. I don't know. Just publishing it and getting all the attention. But if it, yeah, that's probably it. Just so throwing it out there and getting lots of comments and messages, you know. <laughs> that's pretty nice. Did you, did you ever went to a PAX or event like that? No, I've only started going to like small conferences and events recently. I don't really, I don't know, I don't go out much. Okay. So I'm just doing that now. But uh, I'm going to EGX in England in a few weeks, okay. which is probably the biggest event I went to so far. Okay. That might be fun, but I wouldn't go to something like that to promote my games, you know, just, you know, maybe meet some other developers, but I wouldn't do it for, like, promotion. Okay, okay. And will you always be, uh, like, a one-man army? I mean, after, after six or seven years of making games alone, uh, how can you keep being motivated? I mean, we are a team of five, six, seven at Berserk, and uh, at least when you're not motivated, somebody else can be so how do you do all the work just alone? I don't know. I don't. I don't really, I don't feel I need to to work with other people. Like uh, I, I like I like having a variety of things to do. Like I'm glad that I'm not stuck doing one job all the time because mm -hmm. that'd be a bit boring. I like sw I like switching what I'm doing every few weeks. Okay. And uh, I do also like keeping most of the praise that my games get for myself and not sharing it out. Like, I, I wouldn't like to make a game and be like, oh, this other guy made half of it, you know? I think it's a lot more fun if I can take, well, almost full credit for it. Mm. Obviously, the music's a bit a big part of it, too, which people like. But for the most part, I like being able to say, hey, I made most of this by myself. Well, you can work as a team and do like me, like you work as a team and then you're, you're the only one putting your face on the internet and then everybody's like, oh, I like your game, I like your games. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah that's did. a good point. There, there's, <laughs> there's quite a few studios like that where there's like one guy that's really well known and everyone else just kind of works behind the scenes. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, Edmund McMillan's games, like everyone always forgets he has like other programmers working with him. Yeah, but, but they just know him. The guy for Fez as well. Uh, yeah, Fish, yeah. Or Bill Jonathan Fish. Blow, like uh, Jonathan Blow with uh, Witness or Braid. Was like, yeah. Um, but uh, you could do that. I guess that can happen too. Yeah. 
So you're not you're really not interested into hiring a uh, a coder. Like for example, tomorrow you release EBF three and then EBF four go nuts. You get a shit ton of money. For example. Well, e EBF three I'm releasing in a week on the first of September mm -hmm. not tomorrow, but. Yeah, I, I don't feel like I want to hire more people or anything like that because I just don't like handling that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. I like making things, but I don't I don't really want to be managing people too much. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I do a bit of that for uh, the translations. I kind of crowdsource them and bring a lot of fans on board and kind of just, like, help them translate everything. Mm -hmm. And that's all right doing a bit of that every once in a while, but I wouldn't like that to be like a big part of my job. I wouldn't like managing people and trying to, you know, uh, have all the problems that go with running a business. Hmm. Yeah, because when you grow up as a, having more people on a team, you kind of uh, leave what you like at first. Like, oh, finally, I got a lot of people gonna help me and now I have to manage them. So now I cannot do yeah. things that I like. I know what it is. At, at one point, I was like, I was not ma making any code anymore. I was just managing people and doing PR, contacting people with emails and stuff. It was like, why the hell am I doing this? I want to yeah. make games, you know, not manage stuff. So it's a very, like, it's a catch way to, if you want to go faster, you have to hire people, but it makes you not do the thing that you like to do. Yeah, so, I, I don't think that's for me. Maybe a little bit of that, but not too much. Mm. So, yeah, it might it might happen someday, but I, I'm not really considering it right now. Well, I'm impressed that you've been able to work alone for like the past seven years. What do you do on your free time, by the way? You play games or you said you don't uh, play much of games. So what do you do? I try to play games, but I guess I don't. I don't play as much as I used to when I was like in high school and I had tons of free time. Yeah. But I, I do my best to try lots of games, but most of them are pretty short. So I guess it's not a huge chunk of my time. Okay. Uh, besides that, let's see. What do I do? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, my hobbies were. It's like, I like video games. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> you are a very simple guy <laughs> well I do stuff on my free time and when I work I do stuff as well I like it there's zero stress in your life <laughs> much yeah. respect <laughs> yeah I don't go out that much I try to go out at least once a week try something new like drive around go to the beach or something hmm. but yeah it, it's it's weird because like most of my hobbies are also work related so hmm. it's kind of hard it's kind of hard to list things that I do outside of work when you know most of my hobbies are like involve like you know technology or games and stuff which is also what I'm doing for work yeah yeah so like uh, yeah I'll, like well, this last week I've just been playing like free games on Steam most of the week okay. trying to figure out what other people are publishing for free and that's like it's Partly related to my work because I'm I'm trying to figure out how they're kind of profiting off their free games, what kind of links they're using, you know, wh why why exactly they're posting their games for free, and that's both work and a hobby. So that's weird. Like it, it, it's hard to say like how many hours a week I work or what I do in my free time because they're kind of similar most of the time. Okay, so you try to to uh, to combine your free time with your work. Like okay, I don't. Like for example, playing free games, it has a underlying reason that you you do play those games in particular because you want to check out like what's what people do, but it doesn't count as work, but it does, kind of. Okay, okay. Yeah, I do the same with the, the gaming events that I'm going to. It's like I kind of do them for fun. I kind of do them for work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, another issue is that I find it very hard to do creative things outside of work now. Mm, okay. Because it's like, hey, I could be getting paid for this if if I just, you know, made a game instead of, you know, playing around with a level editor in Mario Maker or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Or, you know, so. Yeah, I feel like I'm not doing anything creative at all outside of work now. Mm. But I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, when you do work on your own, uh, your free time kind of 
have a blend with your work always. Like for example, uh, this weekend, I was uh, I had some free time. I was like, oh yay, I got some free time because I have three kids, so free time is not really uh, it's a luxury. So I had free time this weekend. I was like, hey, I should play video games. So I start I started to play Doom. I opened up the game and I was like, uh, I sh maybe I should not play Doom. Maybe I should work instead. So I just closed Doom instead and just started to work. But I was like, okay, it's weekend. I should have a free time. So I'm gonna work on something that is not in priority right now you know i'm not gonna work on my game for example so i worked yeah. on something that i would not allow myself to do during my work time so i kind of blended the two because i felt bad playing games because i said ah, i should use that to you know make more progress into my own game so it always becomes like a blend of is there a work value in my free time so yeah, I think so too. Like uh, the other thing I should mention is uh, I'm not very good at switching between like different routines. Like if I'm working hard on something, I like to just spend as much time as I can on that one thing. Okay. And then if I'm gonna take a break, I will just take a really long break. Like say, uh, say I'm getting like all my animations done, you know. I'm just gonna do as much animations as I can, and then when I'm too tired to continue, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna rest, you know, I'm just gonna do relaxing stuff, watch TV, play video games, go on a walk, you know, maybe go on a little drive around the place, just try to relax, but I don't get into like any major hobbies while I'm working because I feel like the two would just kind of get in the way of each other. Okay, yeah. But then when like something really big happens, like an awesome game comes out that I've been looking forward to, you know, or if I go on holiday, I just, completely go on that and try not to think about work for a few days at least okay okay, okay. no so it's, it's like i, I kind of find it hard to like mix both together in the average week you know mostly it's just like a lot of work and then a long break you know okay. of like two or three days or more at least without any work at all so but you're... uh yeah most of my hobbies are just me trying to like de-stress and like keep healthy away while, while i'm not at work you know like uh uh, relaxing in front of the TV, trying to read books, uh, trying to get some exercise because I'm obviously, you know, sitting in front of a computer most of my life. Mm. So I try to try to I try I try to get exercise at least semi regularly. Mm. Do a bit of cycling, do a bit of weightlifting, whenever I can, and uh, yeah. So a, a lot of my free time is just me like doing maintenance on myself while not working. That's very healthy. That's a good way to keep in shape and keep in working. I, I guess, yeah. It, it's it's kind of a weird weird saying way of uh, weird way of living. You know, it's like most people just kind of work so that they can go home and get back to their hobbies or whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah. And and for me, it's like kind of the opposite. It's like when I'm not working, I'm just kind of trying to stay healthy, trying to you know educate myself and relax and, and get fit and stuff so that I don't die while I'm working on something. <laughs> yeah, I do relate to that so much. Like, uh, I, I know a lot of my friends are like, oh, I'm doing, I, oh, no, it's Monday again. Oh, I, I have to work and oh, I can't wait to be home and they have a shit ton of hobby and everything. And I'm like, people ask me, what's your hobby? I'm like, I don't know, I work. Usually when I have free time, I work. Like, I it's do. like, yeah, I, I, I like drawing, I like programming, but I do that for work. I don't do that as a hobby, you know. Yeah. I, I find it fun, but I wouldn't call it a hobby anymore. Yeah, and sometimes now, like, if I want to have fun on a project, I always try to find a, not a lucrative way, but something like an outcome. Like, if I do this, for example, can, yeah. I, can I use it for something? Can I, for example, make a stupid game and then put it online to try to get more traction on my other game. I always try to find a way to, you know, have the benefits out of my creation. And that kind of kills it because I, when you start, you're just like, oh, I'm gonna do this for fun. And that's it, just for fun. But uh, yeah. later, you just try to always try to fit that. Because you always have a like, million ideas. So you, you try to take the one that are more benefits, that have at least some benefits. So. I think that's a good way of making your games more interesting though because mm -hmm. you want to make them fun for you to develop mm 
Yeah. So if you if you're like getting bored of doing the same thing over and over again, you're like, eh, I think I need to try programming or animating something completely different and just stick that in the game, yeah. you know, because it'll be fun for me to do, but it'll also be probably fun for the players as well. Yeah. Which is where a lot of my weird weird ideas come from. Like in EBF four, the art style for the cutscenes is completely different from anything I've done before. Yeah, I saw that. It was and, like the and and that that's thing. basically because I just didn't feel like doing the same thing I've, I've always done before you know I'm like I just wanted to do something different you know so I yeah. did and I think it worked quite well and stuff like that is you know basically just me trying to have fun working yeah and relaxing and sometimes those things get super popular or uh, for example that that moment for me was a uh, frantic frigate I made that uh, on a weekend uh, because my wife wasn't there, so I was like, man, I'm gonna try to make a game in three, do eight, three days, put that on MGL and see like how much can I do. And uh, it turned out that it was one of our most successful game. That stupid little game I made in three days, and then I asked Mark, can you redo the visuals, because I don't draw anything. But uh, it turns out that it was super popular, that little game I made in three days, you know. And I think that it feels like it, it feels in the game when the creator had fun doing it. I think that the games, the player will feel it as well. It's been a long time since I've made a whole project in three days. Uh, <laughs> but it, it is fun to work on small games mm. every once in a while. But it's, it's really hard for me to do now because, you know, people expect a lot more from me. Mm. And I, I'm like, it, the other problem is that publishing a game is like so much work now is because you have to make like trailers and all these icons and you have to do like achievements, integration, all that stuff. Yeah. And if you're working on a small game, all of that, that extra stuff will end up taking you more time than the game itself. Yeah. You know? And it, was, it wasn't like that before, like when sites like Newgrounds were much simpler and you just posted a flash file and that was that. Now there's like so much more work surrounding it that I find it really hard to ever like work on a small project again. Yeah, yeah a lot of people is asking me for marketing advice and PR and stuff. And I'm like, sorry, I don't know. Like, I don't know. In the flash games, you just put your game out there and that's it. No, we didn't have yeah. any trailers. Even for Zombital, we just put the game in out there and that's it. Uh, we were uh, we had a partner with FGL on this one, but uh, basically just put it on uh, on Congregate on your ground. It's so like man, let's hope for the best, and then it goes like on all the website and everything. So I have yeah. zero idea how to promote a game and everything. So yeah, it was very good on Flash game websites. Though, you know, they kind of took care of all the marketing and stuff. Yeah. It's like if, if your game was good, it, it would get rated well and it would get uh, showcased more. Yeah. And you didn't really have to do anything. You know, yeah. it was it was kind of quite fair. Like if your game had appeal to most of the players, then it usually got more or less as much ex exposure as it deserved on the website, which was yeah. pretty good. Yeah, didn't have the whole. Uh publicity thing like this game is more advertised so it's more popular it was just more like a justice like yeah you like I it so. it's gonna be on front page and that's it it was it wasn't like perfect like if you're making really niche content obviously wouldn't be very successful yeah. but you know it, it kind of motivated people to make games that would have a broad appeal you know mm -hmm. like it it kind of like it just forced you to make games that were really accessible for everyone, like that were really easy to get into, that were addictive and stuff. And as a result, I think a lot of people made a lot of really fun games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now I, I'm noticing that a lot of a lot of developers like these days don't really get that anymore. Like they they, they publish a game on Steam or something, and and they've had almost no one actually like test the game at all. <laughs> And like like they they didn't make a prequel. They didn't have much fan base to look yeah. at it for. And they're just gonna like throwing a big game out there that they maybe spent several years on it. And like they they've not had like any time to iterate on it and to yeah. fix stuff. And, and it just like kind of really scares me that people can like work so long on a project that's not been like tested and proven and stuff. Yeah, it's weird. Well, that's one of the biggest problem, uh, the biggest mistake, should I say, of a new game dev, like trying to make something that will take like three years of de development and put it out there, and then, like, it's very, uh, it's very risky. Yeah, Sometimes it does so. work, but it's like, Undertale worked, and then there's like a thousand of other people who did 
like a three year development game and didn't work. Yeah, you gotta watch out and not like take lessons from the successful games. Exactly. Because for each successful one, there's tons of ones that did pretty much the same thing but didn't work out. Yeah, and even like I remember uh, having an inter. I, I remember uh, watching an interview with uh, Edmund Mickman, and he was saying that uh, people think that I made one game, super like Super Meat Boy, and that's yeah. it. I got millionaire, you know. But I actually did like 40 games behind that. You know? So people, even with him having done. 40 games in the past and then one successful title people still think that the recipe is to just make one game and one very good game and then voila you get all the ladies and all the monies and everything yeah he was making games for a really long time yeah. like i don't know if gish was his first game or not but no. like I, i remember people talking about that like in high school before we were even like visiting new grounds yeah it was like so long ago Yeah, he's, he was talking about 40 games. So 40 games on him yeah. alone is a lot. I don't think that Gish was the first one, but... Uh, yeah, probably did a lot more. Yeah, Gish was a long time ago already. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, anyway. But yeah, I, I mean, we're doomed to uh, people thinking that uh, you have to only make one game and that's it. Yeah, it's uh, it's like any other creative industry, I guess. It's like yeah. everyone wants to do it because it's kind of fun. Yeah. But, you know, you, you need to be popular for it to succeed, and not everyone can be popular. Yeah, the same goes with music or video or film yeah. or whatever. Like, you only make one film and that's it? Nah. Nah, something yeah. like that. Uh, let me check if we have new questions. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang <laughs> on. What? Okay, I want to ask this one, because... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, what it, I, it's probably... It's probably uh, I want to say, how did you come up with the molesting of Natalie, and why did it stay? Was it part of popular with fans, or is that popular it, with fans? It's just anime jokes, you know. <laughs> it's, it's like what every anime does, you know. Can you explain me the context? Because I don't get the molesting of Natalie thing. Oh, uh, you you can uh, you can click on her titties in the game, and they bounce. <sighs> okay. And that that's been in every game. Pretty okay. much, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, that was. I don't remember when I started that. It was, it was probably like, "Hey, I'm, I'm making stuff in Flash. I can make pretty much anything a button that you can interact with. You know, yeah. Where do I want to use this feature? Let's see. <laughs> well, it's pretty obvious. You know, I'm surprised more developers aren't doing stuff like that. <laughs> but, but I've expanded it. I've expanded it in uh, in EBF5, and there's a lot more stuff you can click on now. Ooh. Like, uh, like no legs, you can swipe his ears, and he does that cat thing where his ears twitch, which is pretty cool. <laughs> but yeah, there, nice. there's also a boss that you can poke in the eye. It's pretty funny. But yeah, I'm I'm doing more stuff like that because that's what Flash is good at, and I yeah. need to make more excuses for why I'm still using Flash. <laughs> yeah, do you still? How do you respond to the old the, to the big Flash is dead thing? You're still using Flash for EBF five? Oh uh, yeah, I am. Yeah. Pretty old technology there, because well, my excuse is that. Uh, If I make it in the same engine and everything as the previous games, I know I'll be able to make a game that's at least as good as what I've done before, and those were pretty successful. So, you know, if I tried something new, I can't guarantee that I'd even ever finish the game. Like, okay. if I made it in Unity or something, it's like, I can't guarantee that I can make a huge game in Unity anytime soon. I, I'd probably have to, like, practice using it for years before okay. I got anywhere near as good as I am with Flash, you know? Mm -hmm. It feels like making a game in a new engine would be a lot riskier than just using a really old one that's dying off, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do understand, though. Well, yeah, so do you... Uh, how do you handle the code, by the way? Do you do you use, like, a Flash Developer? Flash, blah, 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 flash Develop? Or are you using... Uh, yeah. Or? Yeah, I, I use Flash Develop okay. for pretty much everything. Okay, okay. Pretty handy. It, it's very close to uh, Java's development thing called Eclipse that we were taught to use in university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I know a lot of like, people using it. 
yeah, so it's like, oh, this is basically Eclipse, but for Action Script and Flash. So mm -hmm. that's that's what I started using, and it works pretty well. Yeah, I know a lot of people using that professionally as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm using the uh, the Eclipse plugin for Flash. Uh, it's called FDT, but it's super obscure. Uh, oh, uh, but it's uh, it's paid. You have to pay for it. Oh, it's, oh, it's quite yeah. expensive as well. So yeah. It's probably why yeah. it didn't take off yeah yeah I, i'm still using it because at the fir at first uh, when i started flash develop didn't have breakpoints and uh, fdt had so it was like fuck it I, i'm gonna pay for having those breakpoints uh, on my code you know and then flash develop finally added them down the line yeah but i was like three years of expertise of experience into fdt it was like ah well i don't want to learn something new well ah, fuck it here's my 50 bucks you know so. Yeah, <laughs> and I stuck with that since then. Yeah, like uh, a lot of people kind of say that. Oh, you need to be constantly learning new technology to stay on top of things. But I don't think so. Like you got you got to learn new stuff every once in a while. But it's important that you also spend like most of your time actually developing things yeah. and not just learning new technology because otherwise you'll never publish anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no one big solution to rule them all. And uh, I know that when I first started, I was uh, like a dog go running everywhere on every technology, you know, saying, oh, we could use this, and we could use this as well, and yeah. this as well, uh, why are you still using this? It's not the best thing all out there. It's like, yeah, but we're working and we're making stuff, you know, so we have to stop thinking about which tools to use and just take the damn tools and do stuff, you know. Yeah, like I'm probably just gonna keep using the same strategy until it stops working and I'm forced to do something else. Yeah, because I don't want to change things while I'm doing pretty well. You know, I think that yeah. would be pretty risky. Yeah, that's a big. Uh, I mean, a lot of people comes to my stream actually. Well, not a lot of people, but uh, once in a while, there's one guy saying like, "You use Flash? Ha ha ha! That's like the worst thing. But Flash is dying. You suck. Or whatever. You know." And uh, like, there's so much more language that are better than Flash. I get that all the time. Yeah. And I just hear, I just laugh because, like, well, what I usually say is, uh, okay, like, usually the question is, why don't you use Unity? And I'm like, okay, right now, if you're starting, you should use Unity, not Flash, because you don't have any experience. You're starting up, so start with learning Unity because. <laughs> It's better uh, than Flash. You can make more console game with it, and you can make lots of stuff. So for game development, I think that it's better. So it's like having to choose between a pistol and a uh, rifle, for example. But for me, I took the pistol back in the days because the rifle wasn't there, and uh, all the experience over the years, we added a scope on that pistol. We added more gun, we added more ammo, we added something else, it became a bazooka, and now, after 10 years, we have a freaking tank. And we can go everywhere with that tank, you know? Name 10 years of experience. Uh, so now, I have the choice between a tank and a rifle. I want to stick yeah. with my tank, you know? I don't want to come back to square one with the rifle. It's like, pew, pew. Uh, I don't like this shit. I want my tank. Bah, 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 you know? That's a, so. that's a pretty good way of putting it. It, it, reminds me of, it reminds me of hearing about, like, the space shuttle and how it was running on really, really old computers all okay. the time. Okay. Because they were tested so much and everything worked and they didn't yeah. want to change any of the computing systems to anything more modern because it might introduce new problems. Yeah. So like the space shuttle was like using computing hardware that was like decades out of date. <laughs> and, and they just kept it that way because they knew it worked, it worked. and they didn't want to change it because it could result in a catastrophic disaster if they made a new system for it. Yeah, like losing it just, millions of dollars. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of how I feel. It's like... Yeah. What I what I have now works and I'm confident that it'll work. So yeah. I'd like to hold on to it a bit longer. Yeah, people uh, like I want to say beginners uh, spend way too much uh, value, put way too much value on which tools you use and not what you do with it, you know. Usually the, the short answer I do like when people say like, "Hey, what's the best tool to make games?" I'm say like, "What's the best instrument to play music?" Pick one, you know. Yeah. There's no pick one and do awesome stuff. That's it. Yeah, you got to get good at whatever you're using. Mm. 
there's I've played like a lot of indie games, and some of them have used some like really really obscure engines that I've never even heard of. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm I'm surprised you can even make a decent game in that. But if you know how to use it, you know you can make things that no one's ever imagined before. Yeah. And again, Undertale was made with the game maker. So. Yeah. And it's like Undertale's like really interesting, mm-hmm. but yeah, like. It, it's not like it doesn't use any high tech stuff, but it doesn't run at 60 FPS or anything like that. But it's still a really interesting game, and that's much more important than it being like technically amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. So, do we have another question? I was like one last because it's already like an hour and a half, and uh, we're gonna go to the uh, the giveaway right after that. And All right. I have to take care of my kids as well. So, do we have yeah, more? Sure. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Ah, no. What's your inspiration for all your game? Ah, well, I, we haven't said this one. Oh, right. well. That That's a really silly question, I think, because, like, real life is my inspiration. Like, <laughs> obviously, everything I experience is my inspiration. Like, all the games I play and everything, you know? Yeah. So I don't think I, I can really give a simple answer to something like that. It's just such a open question. You pick from uh, many d- different things, like even in books or movie or games or whatever. And yeah, of course. Yeah. You that into this. Uh, if, if I was to like pick specific examples that have inspired me more than most things, I have to say, well, obviously Final Fantasy, because mm-hmm. my games have a lot of similarities to that. Uh, the game Golden Sun, which is an uh, old RPG for the Game Boy Advance. Yes, uh, yes, yes. A lot of my animations and menus look pretty similar to that. Uh, the game Maple Story, which is a pretty It's a crappy 2D MMO, right? MMO, yeah. It's, mm. it's, it was a bit better when I started playing it, but now it's full of grinding and microtransactions. Okay. Or I, I, they changed it quite a lot since I stopped playing. I don't really know what's in it now, but okay. it, it wasn't the best game. But it was really simple and fun to play, and the art style was really appealing to me. And I, I've copied quite a lot of it. Like most of my monsters are in a very pretty, much pretty similar style to what they had in that game. Oh, hmm. so, uh, let's see, what other game? And is there like it's one guy? Obviously, or... all Nintendo stuff is all on Yeah. Totally. <laughs> is there any like one guy or one company that you are really like near your heart and you're always like, okay, that's I can't wait for this next game to come or you know, like <laughs> I wish I would be that awesome or I don't know. Is there like any big inspiration Not like that? Far. No. Like there there used to be a lot of people like that when I was a teenager, but now I'm like yeah, they're all normal people and like I've kind of <laughs> I've kind of experienced a lot of the same stuff they probably went through. So you never so, get jealous by playing a game, for example, saying like, oh, like, like, yeah, like I, I don't look up to anyone and be like, oh, this person is amazing. I, I'll never be that great or anything like that. I'm like, yeah, they're they're pretty similar to me now. <laughs> they're, they're, they've may, they've maybe maybe had a bit more experience and a bit more luck, and they're a bit more talented. But I think, ah. Uh, my voice is getting really tired. <laughs> <coughs> Dude, I envy you, though. I mean, when I played Undertale, for example, it has destroyed me for an entire week. I was not able to work or whatever for an entire week. I was like, fuck, because like, I, there was a lot of elements in Undertale that I wanted to make on Just Ships and Beats. So it was like, I'm going to make some this and this and that. And uh, the guy made it in Undertale and made it better than what I was expecting. So I was like, oh, so for an entire week, I was super jealous. It was very hard for me to sleep and, you know, imagine all the worst. Uh, but I still, like, really respect the, the, the game and I still love it and I still want to meet the guy and everything. But for real, it has, like, it has been a very roller coaster week after I played Undertale. After I see, like, yeah. all the stuff and everything. So. That's why I that say was, I envy you. It's like, oh, he's not a normal guy. It's only a normal guy. I was surprised with Undertale that the, he made so many. Uh, he made so many surprises, like mm-hmm. in, in a genre that's like pretty well established. You know, it's yeah. like he came up with all this stuff that's like not really been explored. 
But now that the game's out there, it's going to be like pretty easy to copy it and make similar stuff and take inspiration from it. Yeah. Like I'm already looking to take quite a lot of ideas from Undertale. Like for example, all the text effects and all the personality that yeah. the like non-player characters have. Like I'm going to try to make a lot of my enemies talk now and have like kind of the personality that they have in Undertale. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm just like. It's a really good game, but I can steal stuff from it. It's not impossible to make something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to try to take a bit of inspiration from that too now. Sweet. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to say it. But yeah, this one, this, this particular game hit me very hard. I'm glad that you uh, you are at uh, one stage where you're just like, oh, okay, you cannot get jealous of anything. And, uh, just, oh, like, I still enjoy get it. jealous. That's <laughs> you do okay there you go but i i know it, it's it's a bit silly because yeah. you know i'm still doing good enough and i shouldn't I, I can't complain you know yeah you have to remember to, uh, being able to make a living off video games is like you're already better than like almost everyone who tries to make video games you know yeah yeah I understand. like, like if, if you can just get by making That's... video games then then you're already doing really well somebody once told me on the on the chat like uh, when will you consider yourself successful and like dude i'm making games and i can pay my bills with that i'm yeah. already successful you know i don't want more than that i'm already yeah. like that's it as long as i'm doing that i'm successful you know so yeah i don't want better than i agree with that mm. sweet all right, well, let's finish on that beautiful note then, my friend. So you have some keys for us, right? Yeah. Sweet, for uh, Bullet Heaven and EPF4? Yes. Sweet. Uh, all right, so we're going to run that right after that. So feel free to stick around in the chat, uh, Matt, and uh, like spam right. the chat with your Twitter. Like, How can we uh, get stay in touch with you? On your Twitter, on your, on your email, mm -hmm. on your, not email, but on your website? What's the best way to keep in touch with you? Uh... The website's the most complete thing. I post everything there, so that's okay. the best. But if, if you want to talk to me, then Twitter's probably the best way of doing that. That's where I, I check for messages the most. Perfect. But you know, I, I don't really, I don't really have normal conversations with people, so I'll probably ignore you unless you have a really specific question. <laughs> All right, sweet. So anybody, anybody here in the audience, you just have to. Uh, okay, I'm gonna say like uh, exclamation po exclamation mark cupo and you'll be part of the giveaway. So we're gonna run that right afterwards. Please, Matt, uh, thank you very much for being on the show. Feel free to stick around and uh, spam the chat with all your, your 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 links and everything. Thank you very much, man. It was very uh, it was very uh, helpful. Thank you very much for being here. All right, thanks for having me. See you later. Sweet. See you, man. Nice. So we uh, so exclamation mark 